Good afternoon. Thank you very much. Uh, it's great to be at this fantastic conference. And uh, my talk today is on deep tech, the future of technology. Uh, I saw, it's great to see so many young people at this conference because uh, you are the future and you are born in a very, very special time, perhaps the best time in the history of human race in terms of what technology can do to disrupt, enhance, and change and improve the future of humanity. There probably was the closest moment to this moment was about 120 years ago, around 1900, when three great technologies, electricity, radio wave, and the combustible engine, which created phenomenal industries and changed the future for the 20th century. And these technologies are not just being used in one application, but they, are inter they interact with each other to create further and further industrial changes. For example, take a look at this slide, right? Obviously, uh, electricity changed the future of energy, and the combustible engine changed the future of automob automobiles. But think about the future of radio wave plus uh, electricity. That's what created the telegraph, the telephone, the television, and that's also what created the, uh, the World War II enigma, the first computer that created the computer industry. So technology is the most valuable and most incredible way that our future can be changed. And we're at an even bigger confluence today because we had three big technologies back 120 years ago. Today, we're talking about five technologies. We're talking about, at the very center, artificial intelligence. This is computers that will be smarter than us for most things that you can think of within the next 10 years. We're talking about automation uh, for, that, will, that will replace and do better than human. Half of our jobs will be done by computers and artificial intelligence. We're talking about new energy, cost of energy going down by a factor of 90% in the next 15 to 20 years. We're talking about life sciences and synthetic biology where we can create and edit life. Um, and we're talking about quantum computer, which will render today's computer, classical computer, useless because the quantum computer is so, so, so much faster. So with these five, five technologies, and I, I didn't even count crypto, blockchain, metaverse, all of these things are happening so fast. So the young people at this conference, you, have a, you really have an opportunity, not of a lifetime, but of an entire lifetime of the human race to take advantage of these technological breakthroughs and do something amazing. And many, many, uh, at, I think, the, if you think about the, hi the history of the United States, the second industrial revolution with those three big breakthroughs was what allowed US to surpass the United Kingdom. And we now have these five technologies and it will give many countries an opportunity. And Saudi Arabia, as we've heard from the fast pace from His uh, Excellency today, has a wonderful opportunity. And I want to give you from a different perspective. Uh, I work in China, I'm a venture capitalist, and China was nowhere. 10 years ago, if you go to Silicon Valley, people will laugh and say China's all copycat. But in three, four years ago, I wrote a book called AI Superpowers. In this book, I predicted China's going to lead in artificial intelligence. Maybe not in the fundamental research, but certainly in the application and the value realization. And I plotted the prediction from 2013 to 2023 when US, China will take the lead from the US. And today you read any newspaper from New York Times to MIT Technology Review, it is happening. So what is it that made the miracle happen in China? It's a little complicated, uh, but fundamentally it has to do with China's phenomenal AI engineering education. Talent is critical as we heard from the, His Excellency. And also China's tenacious entrepreneurs who work incredibly hard and who uh, do, will not stop until they win. And we heard, now you're doing the garage, so great for you. And China has created a new ecosystem, and we see you're doing that with Neom. And China has benefited from a huge amount of data. And we also heard from STC and um, 
uh, other, and, and uh, Saudi Aramco. So it seems like Saudi Arabia is absolutely following the footsteps of China. If China could challenge the United States in AI, you too will have a chance. And I just published a new book called AI 2041. In this book, I make a bolder, larger, more ambitious prediction. Namely, that when we saw the circle with the five technologies, I predict that by 2041, China will co-lead all deep technologies with the United States. And I think the kingdom with this Vision 2030 NEON plan, can, you can be the third co-leader if you put your mind to it and your resources to it. So let me tell you, go back now and tell you about these five technologies and why they're so incredible. The first technology, AI. AI fundamentally takes a huge amount of data and trains a different brain than the human brain. It's much, much better than people on many tasks, repetitive tasks, data-driven tasks, quantitative tasks. It's not as good as people on, on uh, things like common sense, emotion, and creativity. But the pace in which that AI has overtaken the people in many of these repetitive tasks is absolutely phenomenal. This graph shows that since 1960 up till 2010, AI has made very small progress, 1.5 times per year. But since 2010 to now, it's seven times a year. And think about that as being exponential. Each dot on the graph shows an important technology. So AlphaGo, AlphaFold, Switch Transformer, OpenAI, GPT-3, all on that chart. And guess what? What that means today is that we're out of compute power because all these new things need seven times more compute than the year before. And I heard that the kingdom now has supercomputing project. And I think you are thinking exactly in the right direction. So if AI is improving seven times a year, how long can it be that many of the things that we do will, will not be taken over and done better by artificial intelligence? Perhaps the largest breakthrough that we saw in the last five years is called self-supervised learning. See, the way AI works is you present a huge amount of data with the grand truth, and it learns. It learns the picture of a dog, picture of a cat, the sound of an ah, the sound of an e. But what is powerful today is that a new set of technologies is allowing AI to teach itself. No longer does it need human supervision. So you just have it trained on the whole world's data, then it learns to translate, generate, search. It can write, it can read, it can write music, it can create websites. Now this technology is not yet perfect, but because AI does better with more data, and this technology allows AI to work without human supervision, now we just throw the whole world's data at it and it becomes smart. This is a huge, huge breakthrough, and the technology that currently only mastered by US and China, and I'm actually here in Saudi Arabia to look for partners and to look for support to transfer this technology to you. So let me, let's look back on, on the two big technologies that has happened uh, in, the, in the past. Uh, back in um, about eight years ago, at Sinovation, my venture capital firm, we saw that AI was about to overtake people in five years in computer vision. And we made a big bet that when AI can see things better than people, then AI will create value, whether it's to replace people or to enhance people. So we made a big, big bet on over 10 vision companies, computer vision companies, and most of them are about to go public right now. Because our, when you read, understand the technology, it's not too hard to put one and one together and see that when AI does better than people, you bet on this technology, you invest in this technology, and it will grow. And today we're seeing another phenomenon, namely that AI is reading and understanding our human language better than people already. And we saw that two, three years ago. We made a number of investments, and they've done extremely well. So today, if you look at computer vision and natural language, both technologies were invented by Americans, but Chinese have monetized better and created more value. This is a lesson for the kingdom to be learned, right? You don't have to be as good with the Nobel Prize and Turing Award as the Americans. The Chinese people have become good at generating data, creating data, using huge amount of compute to create value. So thank you, American researchers, you invent all this. 
we're happy to use it and create even greater value because maybe we have more people, more users, more engineers, more entrepreneurs, more resources, more computers. So this is really an opportunity for all uh, flowers to blossom. And how, how well has my company, Sandovation, done? Well, we are the number one company in the world for investment in AI. We've created 10 unicorns. This is not just investing in the last minute before they become a unicorn. We were the Series A or before investors, creating 10 to 1,000 times return on 10 AI unicorns, currently valued at $30 billion. This is not China's AI result. This is just my company. So this is the opportunity that you too can look and, and, and in the future. What about beyond AI? Automation. Automation, robotics. So once AI starts to run in software, it can too run in hardware. We can figure out that AI can create a lot of value in, in visual inspection, in moving things, in putting things together, in hand-eye coordination. All of that can be done. Not quite today. We can do simpler things and gradually increase the capabilities. This is of paramount importance to China because China is the world's factory. So if China and China wages are increasing, Vietnam wages is half of China. So China must automate in order to retain its title as the world's factory. So at Sinovation, we made the next big bet, is that AI applied to automation, robotics, is something that the Chinese government will support, the Chinese companies will need. So here you see a bunch of pictures that on the upper left is Chinese robots making cars. On the right are Chinese robots doing COVID tests. On lower left are Chinese minibuses that have no driver. Not only do they have no driver, they have no steering wheel, no brake. It's 100% automated on the bus routes. And on the lower right, you see a warehouse that's fully automated. These cars drive like crazy. They don't have to worry about hitting people because all the people have been relegated to become box movers. So these, you can see how these cars coordinate with each other. And once these technologies work well in the industry, they will go into commercial. For example, many Chinese restaurants have robotic waiters. And at my home, I have a little R2-D2 that delivers all my e-commerce and groceries to me. So China is about to become the world's leader in use of robotics automation in manufacturing in, in, um, and in warehouses. And that this is of great importance also, as I understand, in your NEON project. So I'd love to bring these technologies to you, either by you can buy the machines or you can license the IP, you can create your own startups. This is a huge opportunity given how important manufacturing seems to be for NEON. Uh, the third big area is in quantum. This is a huge race in the world. Right, uh, this because quantum computing will will be much much better than today's digital computing. Uh, I won't go into details, but I'll just say that quantum computing is built out of elements that can model an, in uncertainty inherently, and it can model many qubits of uncertainty. The more qubits, the smarter it is. So each qubit can be modeling a part of ourselves, a part of nature. So with digital computers, creating digital twins is very difficult. But with quantum computers, very easy. There can be a digital double of you that takes a medicine, and it will simulate what the medicine will do to your body. Do you get cured? Do you have side effects? If the, your digital twin is cured, then you take the medicine. Imagine how great that is. It can model the universe. It can model what happens with fertilizers, flowers, planting, agriculture. It can model climate change. It can model, of course, artificial intelligence. Every computer program has to be, has to be rewritten. And also, uh, this technology is a huge race. We see here a quote from Forbes that says, the next battle between US and China will not be in the battleground, but will be fought by scientists to see who can get further ahead by quantum. In this technology, the US is ahead today, but the US used to be way ahead, as you, see, as you can see on the lower left curve. China is catching up. And the amount of investment, China is putting two to three times more money, applying for two to three times more patents, doesn't mean China will win, but it's got a place. So I haven't heard quantum mentioned here at this uh, leap yet. I would urge you to look into it. Another very important area is life sciences. Imagine under life sciences, this new area called synthetic biology. 
It basically allows humans to now create living organisms. You can create a worm that can become a fertilizer. You can edit genes to help people become healthy and live longer. This is something that has never been possible before. And actually editing these genes, creating these new organisms, is a digital activity. All of these things that we read about, uh, multi-omics or genetic sequencing, mRNA, um, uh, etc., are all digital sequences. So us computer scientists, AI people, can work hand in hand with biologists to make all these amazing things happen. From gene editing to cure diseases, from creating uh, new fertilizers that are 100% green, from creating cultured meat and manufacturing them without growing animals, and from new materials that are fully biodegradable. So this will have huge implications on sustainability, and this is an incredibly important area. Within one part of the life science, so US is ahead in life science, China is catching up, but there's one part of life science China is now leading, and that is uh, the use of artificial intelligence and robotics in sciences. What this means is, on the left-hand side, you see that, on the upper left, you see that how China has contained COVID. How has it done that? One big part is in testing. Very rapid testing. You've all done tests. It takes 12, 24 hours, expedited is 12 hours. China has a company called Mega Robo, which we invested in, that creates this giant robot. The robot will do 120,000 nucleic acid tests for COVID per day. So China PCR tests are lightning fast, 100 times faster than people. That's one of the reasons. And after doing this COVID test, Mega Robo and us, we realized that uh, biological sciences can be automated. That is the job that technicians and scientists and drug discovery people, molecular biology people, genetic sequencing people, they're all running to the labs doing experiments, but these labs can be fully automated because the atomic actions within the lab are very much routine and repetitive. So we've uh, now been expanding to cell biology, stem cell research, molecular biology, immunology, synthetic biology, et cetera. In an example of a monoclonal process, the human takes uh, over 116 hours with our machine is 15 hours. So what this means is if you automate all of your labs, labs in all of your, of your universities, laboratories, drug companies, pharmaceuticals, all automated, it means number one, you'll save money because you don't have to hire the technicians. Number two, your scientists don't have to waste time on doing these silly experiments. They can think about breakthroughs. Number three, the invention of your drug will be faster because the robots are eight times faster than people. So we can anticipate amazing speed of increase in terms of drug discovery. And also with the lower cost of drug discovery, rare diseases will become treatable. So this is phenomenal. The right hand side is a similar technology that uses all of the past to predict the future. Uh, each drug, drug invention uh, scientist has only his or her experience to count on. But AI can read all the papers, all the clinical trials that succeeded and failed, and use that to predict which drug is most likely to work. Similarly, uh, each doctor treating a patient is based in his or her knowledge on treating maybe 10,000 patients. But AI can use all the treatment data from 10 billion patients and get them much more accurate, predictable, and um, repeatable and um, much safer treatment and personalized treatment for people. So many, many more things. You can read my book for details, huge opportunities. The last technology area I want to talk about is important to this region, and it's about new energy. And we all know that energy is, uh, needs to go green, uh, but what has happened actually on the lower left is that solar wind battery combination have over the past 20 years reduced sorry, past 10 years, reduced the cost by about 85%, making it very economical today. What's more is that all these technologies will advance. Battery technologies will go from lithium to maybe sodium, maybe hydrogen. We don't exactly know which ones, but the trend of 85% cost, cost reduction will continue, thereby undoubtedly making this combination of solar plus a little wind plus battery the future of new energy creation that's not only green but also cheap. 
Just telling people this is green won't necessarily move everybody. But when it's cheap, the whole world will embrace it. And when that happens, energy will become a process that is manufacturing driven. It will not just be the case of who has the best natural resources, oil, natural gas, but it will be the case who can make the best batteries and also the case who can make the best solar panels and to a certain extent which country is in the region with the most sun in which I think the kingdom is in good shape but you, you also need to get ahead in manufacturing in battery technologies and today who's the winner in the world in battery technologies some of you will say US others will say Japan others will say Korea and I will tell you the winner is already China China has this company called CATL it is the world's number one lithium battery maker it's uh, provides to the largest supplier to Tesla and its technologies, production, market share, all increasing. And its technologies are the best in the world. It has multiple generations of technologies. Let me just give you one example so you get an idea. One of their ambitious projects in the next three years is to build what's called cell to chassis. What that means is when you buy an electrical car, you no longer have batteries. The batteries is the chassis of the car. The frame, the foundation, the chassis of the car is your battery. Think about the savings you can have in the weight, in the fewer parts, in the, in the reliability, and also it will have a 1,000 kilometer driving range. And when a company like CATL builds a phenomenal cell to chassis solution and it becomes the architecture of the future car, well, all the other car companies, GM and uh, uh, BYD and Mercedes, they will have to license technology from CATL. So suddenly a battery company becomes the world's most powerful automotive architecture company. So that is the importance of technology. You would have never expected, just like you wouldn't have expected a search engine company to challenge Microsoft. You here wouldn't expect that a battery company will challenge a car company. So to conclude on my talk, I want to tell you that I think today, these are the five big technologies, and China is leading in two of them, co-leading in one of them, quickly catching up on two of them. And China has, has a very pragmatic mindset. Uh, Chinese companies don't view this as us versus you. We don't view it as this is our IP, you can't have it. I'm physically here as an emissary from China to look for partners who want to license these technologies. It's possible to license core technology, IP, patent, uh, source code, making the kingdom realize its dream faster because it has partners in China that can help you. So if you're interested, uh, I'll be in the conference the next two days and look forward to talking to you. Thank you.